Hey guys, it's Pam from the Stitch TV Show here with a tutorial video with our new partner, Quilt Mania, the quilt magazine. So in issue 133, which should be hitting newsstands right about now, uh, this gorgeous cover quilt has this awesome basket treatment. Now there's a close-up of it on screen right now. Wait for it. And what I want to show you are some tips to help you really make that basket look great. So. The first thing we have to do is get our basket fabric. Now, there's two different colors of fabric that you use. I've got one of my pieces here. So, the first thing we have to do is make some bias tape. Now, this particular pattern calls for really skinny bias tape, quarter inch finished. So, one of the ways that you can do that kind of quickly is this method that I'm about to show you. And I've seen it done for bias binding, but this is the first time, well not the first time, I practiced, but the first time that I've used it to make more of a specialty um, embellishment on a quilt. So the first thing you do is lay out your piece of fabric, and I've got the width that the pattern calls for, and this pattern starts on page 77 of the magazine. So if you have your issue, you can play along at home. If not, you can go out to uh, the interwebs or uh, some bigger uh, bookstores or even some quilt stores may carry the magazine. So what you do is you start by marking a diagonal line. Now I will tell you a real trick with bias is it doesn't have to be 45 degrees. You could do it at 30 and it should work just as well. The trick is that you're trying to get your bias tape to a place where you get some give to it so you can make some nice curved lines that you can't get when you're using fabric that's straight up grain. So the first thing you do is mark a line at 45 degrees, which I've done. Now, because we need quarter inch wide bias tape, the next thing you do really is mark parallel lines every half an inch. To get a quarter inch finished bias tape, you're going to fold in both sides. You fold in both sides an eighth of an inch because two times one eighth equals one quarter. Trust me, I passed third grade fractions. That's what it works out to. So for the amount of bias tape that you need of both colors, you need to mark off about mm, 11 strips. That's how the math works out. I did that off camera. Uh, so I've got my 11 strips marked. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut these two pieces off. So I'm going to have this triangle piece that will uh, go to be used in a different project. And then I'm just going to cut on this edge too. Don't cut the strips apart. So I'm going to get this lined up. I have to figure out where I left my rotary cutter. Nope, that's not. Okay, I'm going to cut on my first marked line. And now I'm going to slide my ruler over and I'm going to cut on my last marked line. Now you all will note that I'm left-handed. Cut however you see fit. So now you have this really weird piece of marked fabric. So we're going to match up our two ends and it's going to be a little wonky because what you're going to have to do, we're going to mark on the second one in and I'm going to mark a drop a pin about an eighth of an inch in because we're going to use an eighth inch seam allowance to stitch this together. Not the usual quarter, only because this is so skinny we don't want extra bulk in the seams. So I've dropped this pin in the second line over. I want to line it up to the first marked line over here. Also about an eighth of an inch in. And that's going to take a little bit of fiddling, a little bit of blind luck. Okay, so I have that marked. So now I'm just going to line these two pieces up so my pin is relatively straight. And then I'm going to actually pin it. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is stitch along this seam. And again, it's going to be a little awkward. But I'm going to stitch along that seam. I'll be right back and you'll see what that looks like. Okay. I have stitched my thing together, so if you look at it, you can see that my lines kind of run into each other. So the next thing to do is go and press this seam open, and the piece will end up laying kind of flat like that. So I'm just going to go and press these open, and I'll be right back with the scissors to show you how to cut this apart. So one important note about that marking, use a pencil. Don't use a friction pin, because when you go to press this seam open, if you used a friction pin, your lines would disappear. Ask me how I know that. Okay, 
Now the next thing you're going to do is cut on this line and because you've taken your pieces and pushed them you know one apart you're going to get one long continuous strip of bias. So this next part will be fast forwarded a bit. Okay, so I now have one long continuous bias piece. Now it's time to go press. I will say this will be a lot easier, uh, the pressing piece, if you have a quarter inch bias tape maker. If you don't, what you may find success doing is taking your iron and just folding over one side and then reversing it, coming back and folding over the other. I found uh, through trial and error that trying to hold down both sides at the same time is a little challenging uh, and you're more likely to burn yourself. So be careful. Um, I'll be back in a minute. Well, a minute for me. Be a very quick for you all to see how you start the weaving process once you've got your bias tape prepped. Okay, we're ready to start our basket weave technique. So you can see I've got my background fabric marked. Uh, the pieces are labeled and the patterns provided in an insert in the magazine. And so we're building from the lowest number up. So uh, in this case, it is piece number six or shape six. It's not one whole piece. And I just want to talk a minute about the setup that I've got here. I have made myself a small pressing board. So I've got a piece of plywood you can see, and then I've just wrapped some batting and some flannel around it. And this is a thing that I take with me to most classes. But what it's going to do for me here is allow me to pin my background fabric down. And then I'm going to use this to heat set some tiny glue dots to keep my pieces set up. So I've got my two colors of bias tape prepped. If I can find the end of the one, honestly, it's like spaghetti. So I've got my two different colors. So one color is going to be uh, the left diagonal. The other color will be the right diagonal or warp and weft if we're talking in traditional weaving terms. So I'm going to start with placing some of these, what I would call the ochre color. And I'm just using some pins and you'll note I've got a pretty fair amount that is sticking out beyond my marked area. That's okay because we're going to come back and do a little trimming and tucking and mostly we're just trying to get these laid out so I can start doing some weaving and show you what the technique looks like. Now you do want to be judicious when you're fabric and I will say when you get to a spot where you've got a seam right where you think you want to cut, try turning it around because that, that way you're not trying to fold under an area where you've got some bulk and then I'm just going to pull that off. And where'd my pins go? Oh, they're on the right side. And as we recall, I'm left-handed. They're totally on the wrong side for me. Now, ideally, you would be sticking pins in something that maybe has a foam base. But because I'm going to come back with an iron and some glue, I can't use a foam base for this. Because if you hit anything with a foam base with an iron, it's going to melt. And it's probably going to mess up your piece. So you want to use something that is uh, suitable for pressing. Now, I will also say the magazine features very gorgeous handwork. That is not my specialty. Y'all don't want me to do in a tutorial on handwork because I think it would just be embarrassing for everybody on the internet. So what I'm going to do is come in with a little dot of school glue. So this is just a big box store brand. Three of these pins come in like a dollar package. 
when it's back to school time. You can also use a regular bottle, but I would suggest getting a microfine tip and the top just pulls off. You can see how teeny tiny that is. And I'm gonna come with just a touch of glue. And this is to help make sure my ends stay tucked under and also to give me a little bit of a base. And I'm using a very small travel iron here because you could use your regular iron, but honestly, it gets a little unwieldy when you're working in these tight spaces. Now the glue could dry on its own, but honestly, the heat just speeds up the time. And once I hit this with the glue, then I can take these pins out and it's not quite so fiddly. I mean, I suppose I could skip the pinning process altogether, but, you know, got to keep it real. Sometimes making things is about experimenting. So you'll know I put the glue down just on the inside of the marked line. Uh, and if you're going to do some hand stitching, you really want to be um, careful, I guess. You don't want to over glue because it's going to be hard to stitch through. Now, if you're powering through with a machine, like I probably will, um, it's not going to be that big a deal. You could be a little more generous with the glue, but still, you don't want your project to look stiff and janky because this kind of quilt is the thing that would be a wall hanging. You may not normally wash it before you'd hang it up, and you don't want to have uh, a natural stiffness. Now, you can also make this project with commercial bias tape, but you don't get the variety of colors if you're using your own fabric. So that is one thing to watch out for. If you just wanted to get some solid bias tape, it would probably stay better pressed than mine. Now when it comes to tension, you want to get a nice bit of tension. You don't want it to be floppy like that. Neither do you want it stretched because that's going to cause your finished piece to pull in and that's going to distort some of the rest of your background fabric. So just get it to lay flat, a decent amount of tension. And because this is bias, you're going to get some nice stretch to it anyway without trying. A little dab of glue. You want enough glue that you can get through both layers of the bias tape, but not so much that it's going to soak through and cause a big splorty mess, which is probably not an official term in any capacity, but there. I just put it on the internet, so now it's a real thing. Okay, took me a minute to untangle my spaghetti. So here we go back to kind of the basics of weaving. Now normally you would fill in and get all of your pieces laid down for one way, but for the sake of the tutorial, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Just imagine I have them all. Now, I'm going to do a, the basic weave, and it's not going to look like much from the start. And I can have this piece go. And if you look at the magazine picture, you know, the, it's got a very natural feel to it. That's the, the beauty of this particular pattern, is when you look at how this is, it's not exactly straight lines. And you can look at the picture that's close up with the beautiful hand stitch detail. Um, and there's a different technique that you use to kind of make the basket handle and the, the trim piece at the top. And that's my iron telling me it's done. So, you know, because we're going for a natural look here, you know, we don't have to be so rigid and come in and measure 45 degree angles. But, um, so I'm going to go ahead and glue this bit down. And hit it with my little iron. Now I will say up here where you've got another piece, you could be you could extend your piece up into this area because there's going to be another set of strips that cover up here. So this end won't get tucked under. Down here will. 
Okay, so now I need another orange piece for my cross weave. There's the end. And now remember, we're going to weave the other way. So here I'm only going to go under this middle one. And you kind of do a little dance and a little jiggle. Make sure your ends stay tucked under nicely. Um, so I will say the pattern designer who does gorgeous handwork and Varley, like she is obviously much better at making the spice tape than I am. So full credit to Anne for her work there. And so I'm just going to come and do this. A little bit of a dot. Now when it comes to you want to make sure that you don't have any of your white space showing. Now, she's got it nice and tight in the magazine picture. I'm hoping for the same level of rigor here for mine. And I don't think she used this glue technique because when it comes time to fold the edges under, you've got to kind of loosen it a bit and then get your glue down as you tuck the end under but you know what it's gonna be okay because it's quilt and everybody loves quilts okay we're gonna do one more piece of the orange so we can see that fun basket weave effect And you have to be careful as you're weaving that you're not tugging and pulling the ends up that you just so carefully glued down. And you can see it's really starting to come together here in the center. So I would say that this activity is a good one for when you've got all your stuff prepped and you're just kind of relaxing. You're maybe watching a new episode of Great British Bake Off or some other charming show with lovely British accents and carbs or your you know TV binging of choice because you can tell this is a very methodical process oh look I've accidentally glued my fabric to my iron well let's overcome that <laughs> but no need to get stressed out because quilting is not meant to stress us out One little dab and get that bit glued down. Okay, so you will continue this process and you want to come back and periodically check to make sure that your folds are behaving properly, that your pieces are scooched in. And I would say you probably you don't want to lay these out exactly like flat next to each other. You want to scooch them in a little bit so there's a little bit of um, arise so you know that it's packed in there tightly so I need to fold this little end under if it's getting persnickety okay so when it comes time to we've got everything prepped and you're ready to come back and tuck under these edges you can use the same technique so first thing you're going to do is come back and trim these so there's about an, a quarter of an inch beyond your marked line and you're going to throw those little bits away and then one at a time you're going to carefully peel up the glue the glued in you're going to fold under a quarter of an inch and then you're going to re-glue so you get a lovely folded edge there so yes this will feel like a lot of glue on your piece but the good news is this is a washable school glue so once you get your piece glued down and then stitched down because remember you're going to be stitching under kind of another woven piece of fabric once you get everything stitched down nice and lovely you can gently soak this piece in a warm water bath to dissolve the glue that's after you stitch it down do not come and give it a warm water bath before you stitch it because then all of your lovely weaving will just fall apart so this is what your process here so like again if you get some glue on your background fabric that's not going to matter heat setting the glue doesn't take away the washable properties peel that back a 
bit, fold that under, and as you're folding, you just want to make sure that you get a nice kind of lovely edge here. Now, in an ideal world, this would be perfectly finished. However, let's look again at the magazine. So you can see she's got these lovely folded under edges here. Uh, and we will, let's show the close-up picture from, that doesn't have the nice light glare. And if you look up at the basket handle, there is a, a lovely twisted technique there. So that's easy enough to do. What you're going to do is take your two pieces, and I would just leave the very long pieces. And again, my pressing has gone a little haywire here. But same principle. What you can do is start with your two pieces pinned together, because you're going to be some trimming and you know, after you get your twisting done. And then you're just going to secure this. And this is not where it belongs on the pattern. That's totally okay. But the lovely thing about bias tape is that you can achieve that twisting effect just by coming and doing that. So you know what? Let's do it for reals. So piece eight would go down first. Well, actually piece seven down here at the bottom. Uh, but I don't feel like that gives us enough to really look at. So we have this stitched together and then we're going to anchor this. Okay, so you're going to have all your bias tape bits. So now you're just going to come and do a lovely twisting motion. And then honestly what I would do is come in and every so often just put a little glue dot and heat set it so you get your twist in place because again you're going up around this curve and what you don't want to have happen is think you've done it long enough you cut it off and it turns out you're actually an inch short because your piece pulled so the twisting is a very easy effect to get so hopefully you all found this tutorial helpful this is a gorgeous magazine so take some time to look through the fun pictures quilt mania does an awesome job of covering quilt shows um, They've done tours, we've got, you know, quilt show reviews from Sisters and many other popular shows. So check it out on newsstands. Again, this is issue 133. The pattern is Dutch Flowers by Ann Varley. So please check it out and stay tuned to the Stitch TV Show channel for more quilting chat with friends.